how to have a good quality conversation with someone without interrupting them, without you giving your views or opinions of the situation unless you're asked, of course, and how to ask good quality questions in order for the other person who is speaking to you really enjoys the conversation, really gets to answer your questions and really help them make a decision as to what sort of next steps they need to do, what sort of activities and actions they need to do because they had a really good quality conversation with yourself. How many times have you been in a conversation where you did not enjoy the conversation, you felt interrupted, you didn't feel the other party was understanding where you were coming from, you also didn't feel they asked you good quality questions? And this is something that often does come up. So you have to think about, is this person coming to speak to me and what do they need to speak about? Or whether you are confiding in someone and you hope to get the best out of that conversation. And because this is a two-way street between the two parties, I'm trying to structure this video where you can get the best model, best approach as to how you can enjoy good quality conversation from either side. Now, in a professional environment, in a working environment, you would often come across a term called coaching, where you are either a coach or a coachee. You're a coach if you are qualified or quite experienced coach. You know how to set the scene, you know how to ask the right questions, you know how to listen really well. You are a coachee if you are speaking to, to another person with a particular problem you need help with. In a private matter, in a private conversation that we often have with family, friends, a partner, you can also apply this model because it will work really well. I guess in any type of scenario, good quality conversations are quite important and most of the time we really want to be heard, listened to properly and we want to be asked good quality questions because by asking questions we actually start to think as to how we can solve our problem without the other party telling us what to do unless you of course ask what would you do in my situation that's when you're welcoming the other party to do that but in an ideal world really neither of us should be jumping into this conclusion and straight away as soon as you open your mouth with your problem you may have come across conversations where the other party has felt compelled to give their view or opinion or even worse situation where they talk about someone else's example that has nothing to do with your example or your situation I'm going to take us through a 4C model today, which stands for contact, contract, conversation and conclusion. And this is a model that you can adopt and use in many situations, not just in your working environment. But before I take us through the 4C model in some detail, let me take us through a fixed mindset and growth mindset that often can be a barrier to any type of conversation we want to have with the other person, especially where you're in a position where you want to be listened to, heard, and really hope to get the best out of the conversation so you know what you need to do next in order to solve your problem or a matter. A person who has fixed mindset normally behaves like this. Intelligence is static, leads to a desire to look smart, tendency to avoid challenges, give up easily, see effort as fruitless or worse, ignore useful critical feedback, feels threatened by success of others, may plateau early and achieve less than their full potential and confirms a deterministic view of the world. A person who has got growth mindset normally behaves like this. Intelligence can be developed, leads to desire to learn, tendency to embrace challenges, persist in the face of obstacles, see effort as the path to mastery, learns from criticism, finds lessons and inspiration in success, reach ever higher level of achievement, results in greater sense of free will. Let's go through a 4C model in more detail and I'm going to structure this framework to you as if you are a coach, you are a person who is trying to help the other person with their problem or a matter and they need someone to speak to. So think about you could potentially be a manager at work, you could be a friend, you could be someone in school, 
let's say a teacher and you have someone coming to you with a bit of a problem and they just want to have a conversation with you as to what that's all about and for you to think about how you could structure that conversation in some framework type way. Number one is contact. Contact as a step one of this model is all about creating contact with the person and purpose by focusing, listening, questioning, and above all, by being present. Ask the person who is asking for help what's going on. Explore what has arisen for them and review any progress from previous discussions you might have had. Ask the other person how they would like to use their time and stay on their agenda, understand their needs through listening with respect and curiosity and give them enough time and space to finish what they are saying. Do not feel obliged to fill any silent moments. Step number two of this model is contract. Agree what you will work on and how you will work together. Clarify what they would like to get from this conversation with you. Agree length of the time or the session so you know how much time both parties have. Ask what they need from you and check in to purpose or aims during this discussion. Be clear about any ethical boundaries, confidentiality, record keeping if this is taking place at work. Agree what's realistic to achieve within the time available. Step three of this framework is conversation. Create space to think and get under the skin of the topic. Check in with the person and purpose, being both supportive and challenging. Give the other person space to keep thinking by not interrupting with own thoughts. Invite them to explore their own issue. Pay attention to what is making you curious and share this curiosity through asking questions. Listen for assumptions, I can't or she will never, and explore them further. Bring back the person to the purpose of the meeting if they lose their way. Notice what's not being said and raise it to the surface. Invite the person to think of options and alternatives. Pay attention to their reactions, language, and say what you are seeing. And final step of this model is conclusion, which is all about creating commitment to action and next steps. Help the person commit to taking actions by inviting them to summarize their learning from the conversation. Encourage the person to think about what is realistic and achievable to act on. Invite them to say what they expect to shift, change as a result of trying something different and ask them to say what they want to do and by when. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed my little introduction to a good quality conversation tool. And next time you approach someone where you need some help and guidance, just make sure you contract in the right way so they really understand what you're hoping to achieve. But also at the same time, if people are approaching you for help and support, make sure that you ask those relevant questions so you know what they're hoping to achieve out of the conversation with you. And I think it's quite good quality tool. You don't need to have a coaching qualification for this. If you ever decide to go into coaching type way, there are so many formal qualifications you can do to be that top quality coach. But at the same time, there is just no need for those ordinary everyday conversations at work, school, university, college or privately, you can actually adapt this model quite well to suit most situations you're in. Let me know if you use it and how you find it and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have and see you in the next video.